This is CAF TV. Welcome everyone. I'm Alex Bastiavansky, bringing you all the action from the Canadian Academy of Football on the show today. We're going to have a feature story on Jinga Academy, who after a tough start to the season have really raised their place substantially lately. Also, Andy Honeywell of Jupiter Academy joins me here in the studio to discuss his program, which is based out of Cherry Beach on the east side of Toronto. That's coming up later, but first, Let's get to those sport check match day highlights. And it was a quiet weekend for the under-14 supergroup. With multiple teams involved in tournaments elsewhere, it came down to only GCS and Jenga. But the two squads didn't disappoint in a back-and-forth encounter that was a nail-biter down to the final whistle. Game highlights now brought to you by Sport Check. What are you sweating for? It was a hot, sticky, humid day at Centennial Stadium, but that didn't slow down the two teams one iota. Second minute of play, Logan Reich dances through GCS, lets it fly, but Ivan Burgess stands tall to make the save. Five minutes later, Ryoya Sakakura on the charge, watched closely by Tyler Mazuto, but Sakakura hammers it over top of the bar. Then Fernando Estrada, he had a great game. He plays give and go with Logan Reich, but Burgess again, Oh baby, comes off his line to make the big save. GCS draws first blood in the 16th minute of play. Nicholas Andriola picks his spot from 21 yards out past the outstretched arms of Philip Flamenos, one zip GCS. And then it's Andriola to the streaking Marco Primerano. And Glamanos, oh, he'd love to have that one back out straight through the mittens. 2-0 GCS through 24 minutes of play. Jinga goes back on the offensive. Reich feeds Colby Rogers on the run, who slides it past Burgos, but also past the far post. They couldn't buy one. On to the second half we go. Jenga finally breaks through. Estrada charging in. Burgos cuts him down. No doubt about it. The ref points to the spot. Estrada goes to and he's perfect from the dot this year, and he keeps the streak going, coolly sliding at home. Jenga cuts the lead, 2-2-1. Two, two, then just two minutes later, Look at this header by Estrada. Are you kidding me? Absolutely gorgeous. Insane goal by the young sniper. The Blacks not the score at 2 through 48 minutes. And then just off screen to your right here, GCS tries a shot from 35 yards out. Somehow it goes in. GCS goes up by a 3-2 count. And they smell blood. Cam Clarkson on the charge floats it up and over, unfortunately. All the way over. It clears the bar. Then it's time for the Ivan Burgess show. Sakakura thunders in, but Ivan gets off his line and does a great job of cutting down the angle. And then the save of the week, Logan Reich feeds Alex Amaral, but Burgess says, not in my house. Huge stop to keep that lead intact. Last gasp for Jenga, Estrada to Reich, and then the return, but Fernando can't grab the hat trick. Just wide, it slides. So your final is 3-2 GCS. A truth be told, Jenga had the bulk of the chances. Nicholas Andriola and his crew will take the three points, but he felt eh, they could have played better. Um, I didn't think we played our best, to be honest. Uh, I think the first half, you know, it was good getting that two lead goal. And then we started to sit back, which allowed them to get back into the game. But uh, we showed good character coming back and getting the win in the end. Last week, we didn't play the best. You know, we were giving away balls constant. We're in tight defensively, no chances. Just good to get that one out of the way, bounce back. Okay, on to the under-14 group now. Jupiter taking on Chantilly. Now, Jupiter uh, has been a force in their division this year, undefeated thus far, while Chantilly was looking to exact a bit of revenge against them after getting spanked 9-zip in their last encounter. Jupiter was a bit lackadaisical early on and it nearly got burnt. Scramble in the box, Chantilly's David Bayerano just can't beat the goalpost. 16th minute, Derek Price with the beauty feed here to Lucas Schaefer Wood who beats the sprawling keeper. One zip Jupiter with much more to come. Eight minutes later, Jonathan Law goes for a bit of a run. Chantilly gives him too much space and he goes roof daddy past Sergio Gutierrez. 2-0 Jupiter through 24 minutes of play. Then off the long free kick, some confusion on the Chantilly back end. The ball slides right past and right into the back of the net. Ouch. Jupiter 
goes up by three. Then just before the half, corner kick, Hiwiris Khalil one times at home. And Jupiter's in complete control with the four goal lead as we head into the second half of play where Chantilly manages to get one back. Corner kick, Jupiter can't clear. Bejarano says, eh, thank you very much as he knocks it home to cut the lead to 4-1. Unfortunately, that was as good as it got for Chantilly. Jupiter would go on to add two more and make it a 6-1 final. Total domination by the boys in black. They've now outscored Chantilly 15-1 in their two games this year as they continue to dominate the CAF under-14 division. Welcome back to CAF TV. Last week, we updated you on Epic FC, the uh, dominant team in the under-14 supergroup, and their quest for the Ontario Cup Championship. Well, this week, the squad played in the Cup semifinal in Sudbury, and the boys did not disappoint. Yeah, our thanks to the Epic crew who sent us these clips from the game in Sudbury. First half, Michael Washington doing what he does best. He knocks it home. Epic go up on SC Toronto by a 1-0 count. Still in the first. Keep your eye on the right side of the screen. Number nine, Ronaldo Marshall, as he charges in for the gorgeous flying header. Oh, baby. Epic. Looking good. They go up by a deuce, and then they add to the lead before halftime. They catch the yellows napping a bit. Michael Washington takes the feed and charges down the wing. Ultimately, he's going to find Sal Mazzaferro licking his chops out front. 3-0 for the boys in blue. Epic dominating as we head into the second half of play. Epic pressing deep in Toronto territory. Carson Larrabee just kind of throws it at the net here and good things tend to happen when you do that. Slides it past the keeper to make it a four spot. Epic, way to go boys. Represent, they make it through with a big 4-0 win. Larrabee, Washington, Mazzaferro and Marshall with the goals as they take the semifinal and advance, setting up the big game. The Under-14 Championship, they'll take on Oakville Saturday, September 12th at 10 a.m. at the Soccer Center in Vaughan. Good luck, boys. We'll be rooting for you. Okay, Yogurty Super Group standings time. And, well, after mention Epic, of course, they are on top. Only played nine games, but they've got a six-point bulge over GCS. And then it's Burlington and Dragon Force in a tie for third, both with 15 points. Cap Academy sitting in fifth. They've got 12 points. And Jenga, as mentioned before, uh, they did pick up their second win of the season two weeks ago, but dropped a uh, close encounter to GCS. So they still have only two on the season. Uh, six points total. The upcoming games, they've got a break this coming weekend. And then Sunday, September 13th, we resume with Cap Academy against GCS at 2. Epic and Dragon Force, uh, that's at 4 p.m. And then Jenga Academy taking on Cap. That game goes at six. Note the location, Esther Shiner Stadium for those three games. And remember, head to capsoccer.com for all the up-to-date news, stats, and standings, and statistics from CAF Action. And welcome back. Joining the studio now by two members of Jupiter Academy. We've got technical director Andy Honeywell and central midfielder from the under-14 team, Derek Price. Uh, guys, welcome to the studio. Thanks for having us. So we watched the highlights earlier against Chantilly from Saturday. Um, bit of a spanking, 6-1 final. Uh, obviously, you guys got to be somewhat happy with the way the team played. Um, well, yeah. I mean, um, the boys set out um, how we always do. We um, we put our feelers out in the first few minutes and then uh, start trying to switch the play around the back and uh, try to penetrate through our counterattack. And in the end... Um, it, we we got a lot of chances. They uh, they, they wake you up early because they, they they either a crossbar or a goal post within the first couple of minutes. Did that give you guys a bit of a wake up call? Absolutely, absolutely. Yeah. I mean, um, we try we do try to um, sucker the opponents into coming on to us a little bit. Right. And then um, and then uh, but obviously gave them a little bit too much. Uh, too much of the ball to begin with. So. Right. This was all part of the plan. That's what you were saying. Not maybe not the goal post though. <laughs> um, so. You guys have been pretty much the dominant force, though, in the under-14 division. Anytime that I've come out to film your highlights, you guys have you've won every game. I think you've only tied a couple. Um, so, so really, you guys have been a bit of a dominant force. Uh, talk about how you think the team's played so far this year, Jack. Well, yeah, I think we've been we've been great. Um, 
we've been with Andy for coming up on three or four years now. Okay. So, um, yeah, the team's been developing. We've been gelling together. And, um, yeah, we've been playing some good football and uh, sticking to our game plan. So, yeah, it's nice to see the results. So let's talk about Derek for a second then, Andy. The hammer. Yes. Which is something we're going to have to get into in a second, by the way, the nickname. But what does Derek bring to the field every time he steps on? Um, Derek, Derek will always bring a bit of fight to the game. Um, if, it's, if, you, if you need a, you know, a hard tackling midfielder, then there's no one else other than Derek. Um, he, he wins balls, he's, his distribution's great. Um, let's see, um, he's, he's a key midfield general for us. Um, how long have you been with the program for now? Do you, think it's, do you feel like it's helped you out a lot? Uh, yeah, it's helped me out a lot. Like I was um, fresh from house league when I, when I first started with, um, with Cherry Beach. So yeah, I've, I've come along amazing as a player and um, yeah, it's been great for me. The Hammer. Okay, let me just touch on this real quick. How, how did this nickname come up? Give us the story behind this. Oh, well, um, we, we did a lot of training at Monarch Park in the, uh, in the winter. And after one particular training session, Derek decided to stay behind with one of our other lads and practice his shooting. And uh, unfortunately, ended up with one of his spanking shots. Uh, managed to uh, Broken break. wrist, I believe, that's is what I read what happened. That's, that's exactly what happened. Why are you not taking easy on your teammates here? What's I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Wasn't supposed to happen that way anyway, right? Okay, guys, hold on for a second. We're going to take a quick break, uh, and we're going to talk more about Jupiter Academy. More CAF TV coming up in just a moment. Welcome back to CAF TV. Alex Bastiavansky joined still in the studio by members of Jupiter Academy. We've got Andy Honeywell, the technical director and under 14 superstar central midfielder Derek Price. So let's talk about Jupiter because, as I said, we've watched a few of your highlights throughout the year. We just watched you uh, beat Chantilly this week. Uh, what is Jupiter Academy and why did you start it in the first place and when did you start it? Okay, so um, Jupiter's um, first season is this season. Um, we started in the winter. Um, we realized there was a gap in the market in our area for uh, an elite soccer program. Uh, most of the clubs in our area operate a recreational based program, which is mainly summer based. Okay. So we particularly wanted to make sure it was a year round program focused on football. And where are you guys going to play in the winter time this year then? Uh, well, this, this winter, um, I say we, we are, we'll be practicing out of Variety Village. Okay. Um, mainly, mainly due to its futsal facilities. Right. And, uh, and obviously, Within the cafe, right? And so, if you're running a futsal program this year as well, uh, how, uh, what, what do you like so much about futsal? What is it that futsal brings to the game that that you feel is going to help these kids going forward? Um, it, it speeds up their play. Um, it, it, um, it increases their ability to improve technically in um, the short game. Uh, sometimes, I mean, it can have some negative effects in the sense that their spatial awareness when they move to the bigger field. Mm -hmm. But in particular, at the youth level, it's um, it's is ideal for you know improving their their quick movement and passing. Uh, have you played so far? Have you played yet? Uh, yeah, I played last season. Did you enjoy it? Yeah, a lot it's of fun, fun, isn't though. it? It's really Good quick. Good for your technical skill. It's, yeah. it's fun. Yeah. yeah, just enjoyable. So a question I want to ask, because I went onto your website, is um, the philosophy of the program. I read uh, one of the quotes was, uh, you've adopted the English FA version called the Future Game. So explain to everybody what that is. Well, um, the Future Game was an initiative set up by the English FA to um, you know, just sort of like set out a, a, a plan of action to get England to be a dominant force. Um, they've, they've since gone on and um, redone it, but um, I'm still quite happy with the format which they had. Right. Um, it's ideally, um, it's, it's a game plan of how all England teams should, should play and, and, and with a focus on obviously technical skill, but also on uh, defensive importance. Right. Now, I notice also you stress the team approach, but you're in very encouraging of the individualistic player, the one v one skill. So how are those two things harmonious then when you preach the team, but also the individual skills? Well, the way we do it um, uh, at Jupiter is um, we have a skill school from six to nine year olds. And the, the focus at, at that point is purely on individualism and um, just technical skills. Okay. 
and then as they progress and get older, the plan is to to then put them into a, a, you know the collective part and obviously build a team around th those individuals. Right. When, when a person comes out to watch a Jupiter game, um, what can they expect from you guys? What are they going to see in terms of your technical play, in terms of your style? Someone who comes out to watch you guys. So, um, we're a defensively sound team. Um, we've, our primary focus is making sure we don't concede goals. Um, and then we look to counter-attack. Um, so we, again, we try to encourage the opposition to come at us mm -hmm. so that we can exploit them on the counter. Right. Dirk, you guys have a pretty good offensive team this year. You guys are just yeah, racking up the so. goals so far, aren't yeah, you? Yeah, we just, um, the offense has been amazing this year. Um, some new additions, um, yeah, some, some older players too. And um, yeah, it's just been great. Good pace, good finishing. Um, all around good front three in any in any game. Who are a couple other players that have really stood out so far this year uh, that you'd like to mention? Um, well, I mean, defensively, we've had a, um, a, our captain Zach Fury has really upped his game. Right. And he's very composed on the ball. Um, uh, but offensively, we've got a lad called AJ Islam, who um, I've seen him score a few goals so he, far. Yeah, yeah. The, the kid's dynamite. He's he's really fast. He's really quick, and he can finish. Yeah. Um, and then we've got a few of our, our originals who are from our original days at Cherry Beach who have gone on to you know, really up their game. Lucas Schaefer-Wood, I think, scored like 13 goals so far. We've got a few of Schaefer-Wood scoring as well, actually. Yeah, very impressive. He's got the glasses, right? Yep. He's got the specs, that's right. Um, you're obviously excelling within the Jupiter program. You're doing well. Um, soccer, your future, when you think of yourself as a soccer player, what's the ultimate dream for you? What's the ultimate goal? First of all, do you have a favorite player? Um, well, I've had a few. Um as as um, I, w I was playing forward a bit um, in the winter during the winter, trying to find my position, um, I, I watched quite a bit of Zlatan and Ibrahimovic. You're right. <laughs> uh, what's not to you like? You could do worse. <laughs> yeah, uh, but now I've um, kind of adopted more of a midfield role. I've always loved um, Steven Gerrard, uh, things he's done for Liverpool. Um, now it's great to see him in the MLS. Um, his North American game seems to be just as strong, and MLS, the developing league, um, seems to be a lot better over the last few years. Right. So it's good to see uh, some big names come in. And your coach made a comparison, by the way, of Patrick Vieira as well. So yeah. lots, of, lots of different comparisons going on. If people want to find out more about you guys and the Jupiter program, um, the best thing to do would be go to the website? That's right, yeah. Uh, so we got jupitersoccer.com is the place to go. That's right, yeah. Guys, thanks so much for being here. It's been a lot of fun to watch you in the highlights, and we're going to get a few more games in there, so it's going to be fun to watch. Thanks a lot. No problem. Thank okay. you. More Calf TV coming up in just a second. Welcome back to CAF TV. Well, Jenga Academy have had one heck of a wild ride this year. They may sit last in the Supergroup standings, but they've actually been one of the most entertaining teams to watch. And with a new assistant coach alongside Kevin DeSerpa and renewed attention to detail on the defensive end of things, the squad is poised to finish off the season on a strong note. Jenga Academy, this week's team report brought to you by Leica Sports. Leica, your passion our commitment. In the inaugural season of the CAF Under-14 Supergroup, Jinga Academy was slow out of the gate. It was the last team to pick up a win, which didn't come until their fourth week of play. But the standings don't tell the whole story. Despite sitting last overall, Jenga has been much stronger as of late, picking up their second win two weeks ago, and they've been unlucky, narrowly missing out on a W on numerous occasions. Going into the start of the season, uh, I think we came in pretty nervous, but also hyped. And no, I think we play really well, except we lack playing full, full 80 minutes with uh, high pressure, consistency throughout the whole game with our passing our focus, our defending. But as the season went on, I think with more focus, more practices, we got much more confident and we started to play the way we were supposed to play and how we can play. 
The team has seen its share of turmoil, with some key players departing during the season, but the squad has weathered the storm, which has impressed head coach Kevin DeSerpa. We went through uh, some player changes, uh, we lost a few players, uh, important players on this team, and the other players that stayed with the team, they, uh, they dealt with the situation and they dealt with it very, very, very professionally and, and I'm very proud of them. One odd stat regarding Jenga, they've allowed more goals than any team in the league. However, they've also scored the second highest amount. Offense hasn't been the problem. They score goals in bunches and are led by the dynamic duo of Logan Reich and Fernando Estrada. It brings a lot to this team. Me and him have a, a great connection. He's, he's great all around. He's got a brilliant touch, brilliant uh, just eye of goal, eye for goal. And yeah, he just plays good and everyone sees him playing good. Everyone will as well. The players have responded to the tough love of head coach Kevin DeSerpa, who encourages his players but doesn't go over the top with his praise on game day. Wait for Fernando to come. Okay, everybody's feeling good. Colby, you feeling good today? Yeah. Hands in. Remember everything we talked about? Remember everything Rafa led to? We need a coach like him. If we have a coach who says, good try, good job, next time, as we have him saying, it has to be done, people start to think, uh, well, it has to be done. We can't mess around and it's great to have him as a coach. Jenga has also received a huge addition recently in the form of an experienced coach, a former professional teammate of De Serpa from his playing days in Spain. One of the reasons why we've been, we've been improving in the last couple of weeks is I brought my friend uh, from Spain. He played with me in, in Spain in the second division and his name is Rafa and he's here to, to help my team on the defensive side and also help the whole Jenga Soccer Academy and be part of it as a trainer and as a coach and also help me direct the, the academy in the right way. Because he's here, we've, we've stepped up a little bit, obviously. We have another professional of 12 years playing in Spain beside me, so obviously the kids are getting much more information, they're getting much more confidence and much more, much more playing because we're, we're getting them to play better, to be honest. In the end, helping the players because the players are playing for CAF and the more experience that we can bring into CAF, the better for the players. All right, time for the CAF countdown. The top three plays of the week brought to you by Focus Integrative Therapy. Focus dedicated to your ongoing health and wellness. Just three this week since we didn't have too many highlights. Ivan Burgess had so many of these saves, it was tough to pick the best one. This one was huge though against Jenga's Alex Amaral. Number two, just call him Superman, Epic's Ronaldo Marshall with the flying header against Toronto. That is beautiful and it helped Epic uh, to the 4-0 win to advance to the Ontario Cup Final. And number one, Fernando Estrada with his own wicked header against GCS. He went down to get that one. Gorgeous. And yes, Fernando, you are number one this week. And our super group, super player, the top player of the week, brought to you by Phillips Moving and Storage. Phillips, we will get you there. And this week, it had to be Ivan Burgess. The GCS keeper absolutely stoned Jenga time after time. They came at him in waves, and Burgess was a rock back there. GCS would not have won this game without him, as Jenga definitely had the balance of play. Ivan, you most certainly are our player of the week. And that's all the time we've got for this week. Uh, just remember, though, there's lots of different ways that you can keep up to date with all the age groups of the Canadian Academy of Football. Check out the league website at CAFSoccer.com and on Twitter at CAF underscore football. And you can follow our Facebook page as well. Thanks so much for tuning in, folks. I'll see you next week for more Cat TV.